with that, we go straight to another super highlight speaker, Serena Deckelmann, is the SVP of Firefox uh, at Mozilla, a product I'm sure many of you use daily and love, and probably also a lot of you dial into this conference right now with a Firefox browser. She's responsible for the implementation of the web platform, the Gecko browser engine, and the growth of the Firefox desktop and mobile products and search businesses. And her, her focus is on the growth and sustainability of Firefox. And she has an amazing career spanning more than two decades in tech, education, and manufacturing. Uh, besides that, she has served in num numerous volunteer positions, such as the director of the Python Software Foundation, which I'm sure many of you are, are Python uh, developers and engineers the founder and chair of Open Source Bridge and, and as an advisor for the ADA Initiative, a nonprofit organization that is seeking to increase women's participation, the free culture movement, open source technology and open culture. So with that, um, I'm going to give the stage to her in a second and her to her talk about where she will speak about what is, how to find inspiration. Please all give a warm welcome to Selena Deckelmann. Hey there. Thanks so much, Philip, for that wonderful introduction. Um, so I'm going to talk about something actually that builds on what Andreas said at the beginning of his talk. He shared quite a bit about how to shape an organization and, and um, shape the future of work. And my perspective is uh, going to be building on that, focusing on you as an individual and how to find inspiration now, ideally built around a purpose that motivates you. Um, so yeah, so my name is Selena. I work for Mozilla. My focus is on the Firefox browser and I've been at Mozilla for almost exactly nine years. I was like looking at my hire date. It's on Friday as my nine year anniversary. Um, and what's unique about Mozilla is that we are a company formed for the purpose of serving the people who use the internet. And our mission is to make the internet better for all people by helping define what the internet is and how we use it and by helping defend what we believe are the core principles that should guide its use. And this is how we hope to shape the internet and the web, not just for the people that we serve, but with them. We believe that everyone can contribute to a better web. So the internet as we know it hasn't been around that long. Um, on November 9th, 2004 was when we first released Firefox 1.0. And for us, this was lightning striking and Firefox experienced worldwide like incredible growth. At one point, we had more than 30% of the market share for browsers. Um, and like, uh, it's important to note that Firefox never had an operating system to market our browser. <laughs> we never had a major web application, like a search engine or some productivity software to like use to market the browser. We just have this incredible community, some very dedicated software developers, and a founding team that included people who thought in terms of systems and principles to organize and guide people in addition to how we organized our code. And since then, you might have seen some of the stuff in the tech press about this. We've been in a steady decline from that incredible market share that we had back then. And so this data, which is public, by the way, this is from a live website. I put the a link to it in the speaker notes. Um, this goes right up to September 12th, <laughs> 2021. Um, and if you see at the end, there's this like tiny little uptick there that I am in love with. I jokingly refer to my attention to these tiny bumps as product management phrenology. Um, and for those of you who haven't heard of this before, phrenology is the study of bumps on a person's head in order to, pre to predict like what a person will be. Um, so this is a pseudoscience, but I think about it a lot when I start obsessively reviewing a graph like this. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm really trying to use these bumps to tell me something about my product's future. 
And I think on one hand, it's really important to look at trends and changes in uses, usage of the browser to help us know whether good work that we're doing is having the effect that we want it to have. And on the other hand, it can be something that we can spend way too much time obsessing over without us getting further along in making great products. Ultimately, I want to be able to use information like these graphs of monthly active users for just the right amount of motivation for change um, and for growth. So how do we go from WTF to FTW? So you probably know what WTF is, but FTW is for the win. And <laughs> how do we find the win when the news isn't so awesome? Um, and, and really how I think about it is like, how do we go from like some important but difficult information to, I feel totally inspired to take the next step toward change and to growth? Um, and this is what I was faced with. I still, you know, I'm facing this now. Uh, we, you know, I need to grow Firefox. And we've tried lots of stuff over the years. And we haven't found, like, the magic with anything that we've tried so far. And then, whoa, there was the pandemic. Um, it's been a lot. And I think Mozilla, though, and Firefox are experiencing something that a lot of companies experience when a company lasts, you know, for, you know, 15, 20 years, and then they want to change or, or need to change in some significant way. But I think we all have situations, maybe not just a product or a company turnaround, but just something at work or in the rest of our lives that we think should change. Um, but maybe we just don't quite know how to do that yet. So my advice is going to be super basic here. Um, you know, for me, it's like, go outside, you go outside. And there's three kinds of outside I think about when I want to be inspired. One is like, literally like go outside. Um, the second thing is just to get outside of your head. And the third is to get an outside perspective directly like from people, maybe some new people that you haven't really talked to before. And so I'm going to just like kind of say a little bit about each one of these. So going outside, I just look at this picture and actually like it feels so relaxing even just to look at it now. Um, so I like there's there's I don't know if you've seen like these studies about like oxygen in meeting rooms and how, you know, maybe you like lose IQ points like the longer that you sit in a meeting. Well, opening a window, getting some fresh air, taking a walk like this is like such an important part of everyone's work day or it really should be. Right. Um, and if we were all in a big conference hall together, I'd tell you all to like stand up and walk out um, maybe <laughs> maybe at the end of my talk. But but, you know, rather than right now, but just to get some more oxygen around you, it's totally a thing to do if you're not feeling inspired. The problem might just be the oxygen. Um, and I think it's pretty common in the tech industry for people to kind of lose touch with what's going Going on in their bodies as we're kind of sitting with computers a lot, even like now more than before. Um, and taking a few minutes just to get some fresh air, to look away from the screen, this can make a huge difference in whether you feel stuck or you're able to kind of think through a problem and solve it. So what about getting outside your own head? So this is an image <laughs> from an illustration of a, bo a book called um, Alice in Wonderland. It's very much in Alice's head, what's happening. And the scene, she's trying to play croquet with a flamingo as her mallet. It's just this goofy moment where she's trying to fit in this very unusual game that she's playing. Um, and some of the advice that my CEO, Mitchell Baker, has given um, on, on this topic of getting out of your own head, it's like, to imagine the future and to think about what could be, um, you need to make space for that. And a great way to do that is to explore fiction. And she has recommended some short stories, like a book of short stories called Exhalation um, that I, I also recommend. It's wonderful. She recommended that to one of my engineers. It's a great book. Um, and reading fiction is such a powerful thing. Um, finding short stories to get started with is great, even if the whole book seems daunting. But fiction is a great way to let your mind wander and maybe even rest during a time where reading something like the news might honestly be quite tiring. 
So something else that I find inspiration in are reading interesting papers and research, like this paper about what privacy is for. And it's written by this philosopher, Julie E. Cohen, and it makes some excellent and very concise points about why privacy is important in the development of democratic and pluralistic societies. If you allow me a little digression, this is just something that I think about a lot and, and really value. And um, you know, to me, like privacy is how we form our sense of self, how we become individuals, how we form relationships. It's also how we form critical thoughts and then decide whether we share them. And sometimes we invent a technology that like helps with this. Like as a manager, I spend a lot of time in meetings with people all over the world um, over video. And as a person with a lifelong problem with controlling my face, facial expressions and reactions, um, being able to face mute in meetings is a critical feature for me. Um, so anyway, just like Mozilla's founders really believed that privacy was such an important concept that principle number four in our manifesto is individual security and privacy on the internet are fundamental and must not be treated as optional. And this principle guides most of the privacy technical work that we do. It's balanced against how the internet has evolved and what people are using it for now. Um, and we're working to develop products that demonstrate this worldview and support policy change that puts people's rights at the center. But Privacy is more than a personal right to choose. Um, in order to exercise privacy, we need to be free from surveillance. And she makes the argument that privacy is not just an individual right or simply the right to choose to be private, but a collective right that requires nuanced and sometimes unprincipled thinking to defend. She also describes the purpose of privacy in a way that I like fundamentally agree with, which is that privacy ensures that the development of subjectivity and the development of communal values don't proceed in lockstep. This is the source of the creative tension between change in culture and like making a better world. And it's incredible, per, incredibly personal to me, like as a child of a Chinese man, an immigrant and a white American woman without privacy and freedom of thought, like I literally wouldn't exist. And it's also true that privacy and freedom are needed in order for companies like Mozilla to exist. So, um, so it was like a little intense, but I just want to say like, not everyone finds this kind of thing relaxing, but I find that exploring concepts like this that I'm deeply interested in, it gives me this feeling of flow and joy. It's restorative. And so like spending some time finding what is restorative to you, it's really a wonderful thing to spend time on um, when you're seeking inspiration. So my last recommendation is to get an external, like outside perspective from maybe some people that you don't know already. Um, getting stuck in a rut is a real thing. It happens to individuals, to teams, and it happens to entire companies. So how do you get an inspired perspective? Um, for a company making a consumer product, our first stop was talking to people who use the internet. Um, and you know, we have always had a deeply connected community of folks through our Mozilla program. But what we didn't really have was this strong program to talk to people who weren't already Mozilla super fans, but we do now. Um, and so we spent some time talking to people who maybe didn't even know Firefox existed, and we talked to them about what their experience of the web today is like. And through that work, we started to look at Firefox and the problems that feel pressing in a different way. We found that many people... Um, for many people, the web is an integral part of their daily life, and they're making complex trade-offs between being productive, staying connected with their family and friends, and their privacy. So something new, at least for me, that came out of this research was insight about the ways that Firefox could work on important problems that people face today, maybe in ways that we just really haven't before. Um, and we just announced and we're beginning to do some work that grew out of this research um, and reflection, and we call it Firefox Suggest. And there's quite a bit more coming. Um, I'll just say the organizers, you can invite me back next year and we can talk about how it all went. <laughs> so... A lesson, you know, the lesson, I guess, that I took from this work, developing outside perspective, is that when we're inside of our bubbles, when we're most like locked into a perspective, that is really the right moment to kind of look out and around. And, um, and also just to really not assume that change isn't possible, that there aren't new ideas, that there aren't new ways to solve problems, just like really, really like, yeah, dig in, dig in. You can, you can find inspiration, um, 
you know, maybe just outside your door. So um, I just want to close with, I am incredibly lucky to work at a company that has a set of guiding principles to our work. And I'm extremely grateful and privileged to work with people who are so great at what they do and are motivated to do great work in line with our mission and our company. Um, a few times when I'm having meetings with people like outside of Mozilla, like at some point they'll say to me, oh, we're really rooting for you, or I really admire your convictions. And of course, I love hearing that because <laughs> I think Mozilla is an amazing place to work and I love working here. Um, but something I want to call out is that admirable convictions and amazing work, they can happen anywhere. And there's, you know, just want to like say there's been a lot of news recently about bad behavior by big tech companies that affect a lot of people's lives. And it might be easy to think, well, those are just like bad people, but I I would encourage you to consider that there are systems at work that we, especially as technologists, like we have the ability to influence and change. Sometimes it's just a matter of finding a little bit of inspiration to take that next step on the change journey. So um, with that, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Selena. That was really, really inspirational. And um, yeah, I think you can like, if, if Firefox ever is building maps, which is my passion, definitely sign, sign me up contributing to that part. You definitely got me sold on, on, on your vision. So, oh, um, you. and with that, I want to also share again with the audience that Selena is right after this available in the Q&A stage. So if you have any questions about her talk, about Firefox, the Mozilla uh, mission or vision, uh, definitely like hit her up right there. So uh, with that, Selena, I'll let you jump on to the Q&A session. And thank you so much again for joining us today. Yeah, thank you.